episode Everybody Loves Grandma. Everybody Loves Grandma. The that in the episode, not only is Robot Boy revealed to Tommy's grandma with no self awareness whatsoever, but he even has him activated in front of his entire family at the beach with no raised eyebrows whatsoever. Even though this show specifically set up that Tommy needs to keep Robot Boy a secret. But the factor of this show doing this whole thing, where Robot Boy either gets exposed to the public, or someone in his family or school finds out about Robot Boy, but then it goes back to preaching about how he needs to be kept a secret, just screams out loud about how fundamentally broken this show is. Was each episode only written in one draft, or did each episode bring in different writers that have good memory about how this show's rules work, but then brought in a different writer for the next episode that doesn't know about how Robot Boy is supposed to be kept a secret, and then not look over it and notice these inconsistencies? <sighs> And hey, you want to know why that is? Why is that? Because they were written by a bunch of brain dead monkeys. Who <laughs> brain dead monkeys. monkeys. Dory from Finding Nemo. Dory from Finding so Nemo. Fishes, I think it's about time for me to go out fishing. Because when I catch these people, I'm going to tell them. <laughs> hey guys, Sean S with an technical difficulties. Alert. That piece of anger how it, just saw how was it begins by Kevin MacLeod to be able to handle in particular, wasn't it? There's a reason as to why I put an anger disclaimer at the beginning of this video, as well oh, as my review. Oh, so that's why you family. put an angry because disclaimer. To the audio for this review actually made myself dizzy from how heated it got. I got so angry, in fact, that Jack81, someone that did often scream in his own videos, don't worry, we were cool with each other now, asked me if <laughs> I was doing okay because of how much I screamed in that particular video, and I of course replied to him saying that I'm doing okay, and that there were just a lot of things that I needed to get off my chest about that film, and if you thought that I was already angry with my Monster Family review, Monster me, Family the movie? the appetizer for this video. And just to let you all in a little something, this isn't going to be the only time when me and Jem will be getting angry in this video. We've yet to have gotten to the parts of the video where I start getting Morning, angry. some because moments of screaming so incoming. Turn down your bar volume, volume while you still can. Including the fact that this show tests my comfort because of how borderline disgusting this show is. <laughs> but, um, those things are for much later in the video. So for now, I'm going to give you guys an update for my videos. After this video, I'm going to be taking a bit of a break to relax, as this video was in production for more than a while now. Me and Jem actually got the script done in November 2021. And November 2021? I mean, until that was like uploaded seven months ago. And I've been working on this video since late February. But I've been working on this video at my own pace due to me being anxious because of how long we talked about this show for. And due to how incredibly draining that working on my review of Code Lyoko was, both editing the Lyoko. video and rendering since I had to render it twice because the audio in the first version was out of sync. I started becoming much more slow and got easily burned out for the day that I would take a break after getting that particular segment done. And considering how slow I am personally, I get burned out more than most other people. <laughs> and due to how much I had on my plate for this video, I was actually half tempted to give some segments of the video to another person to Statement. edit. But then thought to myself that it wouldn't be a good idea because I was skeptical about how that person's editing skills would be. And thought about how jarring it would come oh. up as. Ignore so, the static sounds from my speakers. It's just that my speakers are about to get old. Especially when they're there was still an hour when they're connected video, inside the laptop. But I soon calmed down and decided to focus on the audio that I was editing and put the length of how much I had left to the side. So Although, I got I, I got this sure laptop since be giving some of my other videos to some 2020, other I think. Edit. And basically give them unlimited time because I do know how long it takes to make a video. 
which is basically one of the reasons why I created the spin-off series Sean's Yearly Reviews. Since movies are generally Sean's <laughs> Yearly Reviews shows, and the pages for those particular scripts would be at most six or eight pages six long. Six or and eight pages to long. Talk about something easier than an entire series and give out some filler content that would be easier to give to an editor than a review of a show that has multiple hours to its name. And also, another reason as to why I ended up delaying this review was because I was asked by a few people to make some artwork for them because they Art either work. didn't have very many avatar stills uh, or they Sonic were kind of OC art. Previous artists of theirs who got themselves into controversy and when um, I get on T one thing, or it makes it very difficult to multitask. And I was working on some Sean's yearly review episode scripts. The only other reviews in which I do know that I'm going to edit on my own are my reviews on the teacher's pet movie. Rock the Dog teacher's pet Dog movie, Dog. Rock Dog, and those are very short nine. Episodes, the movie. I have a joke in my the one with Elijah Wood in it. I'm going to be keeping a surprise. Rock Dog once again is going to be relatively short, and my nine review is going to be drastically short, only being four <laughs> pages long. And it'll be able to be done in no time. Anyways, Not my cup of tea. Enough. Jim did want me to put in something to give you Take guys a break. break. Are you so finished, Jim? Doing an intermission for you all. Fourth Anyways, of July. All that rambling aside, let's get back to the video. I hope Jim calms down. Jim? <sighs> <sighs> yeah. I tend to burst out in anger when I see bullshit <laughs> writing like this. <laughs> Bullshit writing. Just enough of my energy to be zapped now. Okay, then. Can we move on and do it gently? Yeah. Okay. And speaking of the concept of the show, on paper, the show honestly paper. did have a lot of potential, and maybe it could have been something special and worth watching. But the show does absolutely nothing with it. I mean, yes, the concept of the show is pretty cliché, Basically, it's what you'd get if you combine Pinocchio, Astro Boy, Disney's Pinocchio, Man, Astro Boy, Mega Man, Dexter's Laboratory, Dexter's Laboratory and My Life as a Teenage Robot. My life is a teenage robot. Mix it up and you in get a robot. blender. And it's not a very good smoothie when you mix all of them together. If you guys recall, <laughs> not a good idea like when you mix them up food, together. Teacher's Pet was a show that had concepts that had been done before character wants to be a real you know, boy. The, the main character is voiced by Nathan Wayne, do, the voice of Tim Allen. I love Nathan like them Wayne. And hiding that character's secret identity, whether they were an alien, animal, or whatever. But what works with that show it's is a dog. while on paper, it's generic and sounds bland, it had a ton of creativity in everything else and was so wacky that it made that show tons of fun. And what does Lola Boy have? Well, it has action sequences with him beating up villains and other baddies. I guess that's something. But that particular Our aspect, aspect of this show, this show is, is nothing, nothing special. special. Thundercats, Thundercats War also had entertaining, entertaining action sequences, but that was a show that I didn't like either. <laughs> <laughs> Worst show ever. Like I show. think the 1980s version of Thundercats was better. Two of the only and the 2011 reboot was better too. If you ignore all of the negative and frustrating aspects of the show that we will get into in a little bit, the show still doesn't work for one reason and one reason only. Most of these episodes are either bland, boring, weird, and horrible. Yeah, like Jem said. And not just that, but it's Parable. the way that Ollie's pack was. When the show isn't going out of its way to try and infuriate and baffle <laughs> excuse you, excuse my excuse my voice the acting. Way that the backgrounds are and generic and formulaic plot lines that the show creates makes the show become subpar at best. Well, yes, the concept of the show is interesting and could have been 22 minutes had a three-act commercial break and had a three-act commercial break. Saving career, character development, and artwork. Plot structure and it's inconsistent in how it's trying to set up its continuity and rules. However, it's worse with Robot Boy because its inconsistency even expands to the concept. Being serious right now, what is the show even trying to be about? Yes, the show is about Tommy Turnbull trying to keep a boy Robot trying Boy's to secrets. keep a robot However, kid a secret. The fact that Dr. Moshimo wants Tommy to keep him a secret. 
He also wants Tommy to teach Robot Boy about how to be a real boy and live among them. Okay, serious question to Dr. Mishimo right now. If I had a feeling this is ripping off my life as a teenage robot. Why are you putting him into a situation where he could definitely be put into the wrong hands? Especially when you have him under the protection of a mere child. I don't even care if he's your fan. Have him be the one to take care of Robot Boy. Tommy is a kid. He's the same age as Ash Ketchum. Pencils than adults are. Not all kids, but most kids are not nearly as capable as adults are. Now, yes, Tommy Turnbull is one of the protagonists of this show. And Timmy Turner, who's also ten. Out of Dr. Kamikaze's hands, he doesn't even know about Tommy until he wrote a letter to him. And if all of these episodes made it abundantly clear, Dr. Kamikaze knows that Tommy has rolled up. Constantly makes plans to light a roll up boy, send invitations, gives invitations you could think of all the time, and wouldn't stop until he gets rolled up boy. So what is even the point of having Tommy? Take care of all of them. Dr. Kamikaze and all these other villains try to catch him by any means necessary. When Dr. Mishimo could have just kept all of them all to himself and was really Japanese girl, Roma Boy is pretty capable of defending himself, defeating all of these villains, and he could have just stayed with Dr. Mishimo as like a protector or something. Seriously, the show makes no sense. I agree, Jack. <laughs> seriously, Dr. Moshimo is known to the public and is very popular. I'm pretty sure that Tommy isn't the only one that wrote a letter to him saying that they're a big fan of Moshimo and that they're excited for his next project. And if that was the case, Moshimo, out of all people that wrote to you saying that they're a big fan of you, why did you pick Tommy out of all of them? You have a lot of others around you, particularly your wife Mew Mew, in an entire Mew security Mew. system that is able to keep out villains from being able to go in and capture Robot Boy and Robot Girl. And wouldn't you want someone who is much more strong? That's actually something else that would have made the show better if the show starred adults who live on their own and had a Robot Boy wear skin suit in public. The show wouldn't have a preach about keeping the boy a secret. Why I wanted Tommy to keep an eye on Robot Boy makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. He sent Robot Boy to Tommy to teach him how to be a real boy, but how can he learn how to be a real boy if he still can't be revealed to the public? This premise might work if they gave Robot Boy a skin suit and had him be able to go to school with Tommy, Gus, and Lola like Teacher's Pet was able to do. But like the rest of the show, this particular element of the show makes absolutely Needs no sense to be sense kept whatsoever. secret. It they still need to teach him how to be a real boy at the same time. Yeah, 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 you said that already. Now, I understand that the show is episodic, and it doesn't exactly have a huge storyline with a lot of plot details that will build up to something, but do you want to know what other shows were episodic and didn't have to follow a big storyline? The early seasons of Fairly Odd Parents. Fairly Odd Parents? Jimmy Neutra. They were able to keep what they set up consistently, for the most part. Their concepts didn't have any gaping holes in them, and it didn't leave us with several questions that we still want to know to this day. I thought that you said that you didn't watch cartoons before, Jim. I watched a few cartoons back then when I was a dumb, clueless kid. But nowadays, I don't watch anything on TV today like you do. Okay, but back to the topic. The writing of Robot Boy is on par with Fairly Odd Parents Season 10, something that goes in circles with what it sets up and establishes, to the point of being fundamentally broken. But even looking past the factor of this show throwing its rules out the window, the writing in this show falls apart for multiple reasons. The show literally uses a very despicable character that we'll get to as a plot device most of the time, where he is the reason why Robot Boy ends up getting captured a lot, the show fails to establish certain things on screen, the biggest example being in Robot Girl, where not only me, but Jem would go ahead and question, how does Robot Girl know about Dr. Kamikaze? The show also makes its characters incredibly unsympathetic whenever that character does something really stupid and downright heinous at times. There were certain moments where the show actually wants us to feel sorry for them, and it really doesn't work. The episode Constabot is manipulation in the form of an episode. 
This show right here seriously wants us to feel sorry for Gus, whom we'll get to in a bit. Despite the fact that literally at the start of the episode, he was bragging about the fact that he won a Frisbee game right in front of Tommy and Robot Boy's faces, right before Tommy and Robot Boy laughed at the fact that Gus got hit in the head by it. Writing 101. Writing 101. If you want the audience to sympathize with Gus, you can't have him be annoying right before getting hit in the head with a freaking Frisbee. Because not only is he a piece of shit,